Let's look at some new features with regard to terrain and landscaping. Here we have a duplex plan and we have a terrain perimeter with contour lines and a curved retaining wall. Let's switch to the terrain tool configuration. And we have many terrain related tools. For example, we have our basic terrain tools, our basic elevation tools, some specific terrain modifier tools, and our terrain feature tools, including a new spline feature tool. Then we have some feature based tools for placing garden beds and water objects like ponds and a stream. We've got roads and railings and fences, and we have some new terrain wall tools, the straight terrain wall spline and the straight and spline terrain curb. And these are feature based and we'll take a look at them. The retaining walls are essentially unchanged. We also have some stepping stones. We have our slab and primitive 3D tools. We have our plant chooser and our basic plant tools and our sprinkler tools. Let's switch to a render full overview. And I'll orbit around and you can see the retaining wall, the decks, and the terrain surface. Let's decide to focus the camera and move in a little bit closer. We have increased ability to work on our terrain in the 3D views. We have many commands here in the menu. Let's, for example, place a round stepping stone. And I'll now drag to place the first one. I'll select it and open it. And I want to set the height to about 2 inches above the terrain and the thickness to 2 inches. And let's go to materials for this terrain feature. We'll go to the library and masonry and stone, concrete for floors. Let's just grab this aggregate for example and click OK. Let's take advantage of our new array copy feature. I'll click multiple copy and then I'll set the multiple copy interval. I'll just accept the one that's there for now and I'll click to go into sticky mode. And now I'll alt drag or right drag to copy this out like this. Release the mouse button and move the mouse in this direction and click to finish. And of course we can complement our 3D work with working in 2D. Let's move in here in select objects mode and drag to select all of these features that we just created. And I'll control drag now to move them over next to the deck edge. And then I'll go to build stairs one click stairs and click right next to the deck here and we'll place some stairs and swap back to the 3D view. We have a new feature spline tool. Let's go to terrain feature and choose the spline feature tool. I'll just drag to draw the basic spline. Let's select it, open it, and we'll set its height to 4 inches and its thickness to 4 inches. And let's go to materials and assign a material to this terrain feature. We'll go to the library and we'll find some landscaping materials. Let's look in bark and I'll grab this mulch and click OK. And you see it has the new handles associated with splines in Chief Architect X1. We have our diamond shaped vertexes for reshaping the spline. And we have the small drag handles on each segment that you can use to move the segment. And like with all splines, we can increase the number of vertexes and segments with the break tool. We can use advanced splines and we can convert the spline to a polyline if we wish. Let's find a plant to place here in our new bed. I'll open the library and click on the plant chooser. You'll find an improved plant chooser interface that's easier to work in. You can search through 15 different hardiness zones and you can search in just one zone or in a range of zones or in all of them. They are all searchable. You can view the hardiness zones map here and you can search by common name, scientific name, variety name and pronunciation. You can narrow your search to flower color, leaf color, bloom time and other special characteristics. You can choose the plant type and a 
subtype or more to go with the different plant types you choose. You can narrow your search by height and age factor and by sun water and pH needs. One option you might wish to consider is to search through the plant chooser without pre-selecting for anything. It will take a while, but then your plant chooser is going to list all of the items found. And when the search is complete, you're going to see all of the items listed alphabetically. You can see them by scientific name or by common name. And you can click on them. And you can also type in the first letter to go to that section. I'll type in the letter A to go to the A section and then I'll scroll down to find apples. I'll click on the first one and if you do this with the library browser open, you're going to see the object in the library browser. So I can arrow through with my arrow keys and look at the different plants and decide which ones I might want to use on a regular basis. So I can inventory all of these, find the ones I like, and put them in my section of the library. Let's right click on this one and copy it. And I'm going to go right to the very top where I have My Libraries and right click on the My Libraries folder and click New Library. And I'll name it Valley Plants, for example. And now I'll right click on the folder and paste what I copied into here. Let's go back and look for another apple. I'll decide I like that one. I'll be at that place in the library and it will be selected so I can right click on it, copy it, quickly scroll to the very top and right click on the Valley Plants folder and paste it. Let's decide to get some apple blossom grass, right click, copy, easily move to the top and paste. So you can build very quickly a library of plants or multiple libraries of plants that you use often. Let's expand our new library folder, right click on this plant and open it. And here in the plant image specification dialog, you'll find you have a new XY coordinate position so that you can place them precisely if you wish. You'll also be able to tell images and plants to not rotate in render view, though they'll always rotate in vector views. You can also dimension to them, by the way, if your dimension defaults have specified so. So let's cancel the dialog and close the plant chooser and place our blooming apple tree in the middle of our new bed. Let's close the library browser and go back to plan. And I'll fill the window. And we'll look at a couple more new terrain placement tools. Let's go here and decide to draw a straight terrain wall. And I'll click here and drag to draw the wall. And we'll take a render full overview and look at the result. And we'll orbit around and wheel in. It is essentially a feature-based object. It follows the shape of the terrain. Let's select it and open it. And we can change its width to perhaps 12 inches and its height to 24. And we can assign a material. Let's grab one of our manufacturer's materials for stone. I'll double click this one and we'll click OK. As you can see, the straight terrain wall, as well as the spline wall and the straight and spline curves are feature based and behave quite differently from retaining walls. Now let's switch back to the plant and we'll draw a stream. We'll click the tool and then I'll wheel out and wheel in down here close to the end of the terrain and I'll start to draw here and it's a spline based object and notice how I'm snapping to the midpoint of this object's end edge and let's go to preferences and note under snap properties that I've turned off endpoint snapping. If you turn endpoint snapping on 
and you draw a spline-based object like this stream, or perhaps a spline train wall, you may not be able to get a midpoint snap. You might get end snapping, and it may not draw correctly. Let's see if we can see an incorrect application, but it's not working incorrectly at this time. But sometimes it will happen that it does. And if so, simply turn off endpoint snaps. I'll work with it. It's working quite well, so I won't worry about it. And we'll switch back to our 3D view. Let's adjust the view a little bit by refocusing the camera and moving in closer. And then we'll orbit a little bit so you can see a good angle on this stream. And notice how it sits pretty close to the top of the train surface. But a nice thing about the stream is we can open it and we can say that we want the stream's height to be lower. And we'll set it down to minus 20. The width can be changed as well and we can set some flare properties. We'll click OK and notice the change. And we see how the terrain has adapted to the position of the stream, creating a fairly realistic effect. Let's switch back to the plan. And we'll select our stream. And notice we have vertexes for editing the corners. And we also have these small round handles for adjusting the width of the stream. And we also have these small square handles for adjusting the spline segment. You'll find you can add many of these new terrain-based objects to the library because the ability to add objects to the library has been expanded. And these are some of the new capabilities with regard to terrain and landscaping in Chief Architect X1.